In today's video, we're going to be looking at some key features that Cakewalk by BandLab will be rolling out within the next few weeks, and we're going to get to see them before anyone else does. Welcome back, my fellow Fader Finaglers. This is Robert McClellan from Home Studio Simplified, and this channel exists to simplify the complexities of the home studio and to help you make professional sounding music in a less than professional space. All right, so a quick disclaimer, the things that I'm gonna be showcasing today are not officially released. Therefore, my screen may not reflect what you see on your particular screen with your version of Cakewalk by BandLab. However, if you would like to go and download the early access version that I'm using as of now, I have included a link in the description of this video so you can check it out for yourself. One of the first new features that we're gonna talk about today is the dynamic waveform scaling that takes place when changing clip automation. You can go to Edit, Preferences, Scroll down to customization and display. And now down here under the other section, you're gonna see this new box here that says display clip fade and envelope attenuation. Now up until now, this has not existed. So let's go ahead and check this out. All right, so to showcase this first feature, I'm gonna bring this lead vocal into focus. I'm now gonna to go to this small drop down box here and select clip automation. From here, I'm going to select gain. As I put nodes in line here, what happens now that did not happen before is now when I adjust the gain of this particular track, the changes are now seen in real time. Now it's notable to mention that because this is a mono source, if I were to use the pan option, I would not see any changes being made. All right, so now that I have a stereo track in focus, I'm gonna show you the same principle on a stereo track. So if I go back to this drop down menu and select clip automation and gain, much like you've seen on the mono track, you're going to see those changes being made in real time to the entire waveform. However, if I go to clip automation pan, now you're also going to be able to see that in real time as well. So as we can see, when this option is enabled, now Cakewalk dynamically updates the waveform amplitude when changing clip fades, clip gain automation, and clip pan automation. The waveform display is pre-clip FX rack and only applies to clip automation, not track automation. Additionally, clip gain and pan envelopes are not applied to active region effects clips. For instance, if you have a clip gain envelope on a region effects clip, it will be ignored unless the effect is bypassed. Another thing to note is that the option is now also available as a key binding under track view. Another great feature that's rolling out with a new update is the ability to use offline activation. Now this used to be a thing before, but it went away when BandLab bought out Cakewalk. However, they've listened to the people and they've brought it back. So if you want to utilize offline activation for a PC that's not currently connected to the internet, you can simply go to the help option up here, go to offline activation and export activation request. Now from here, you're simply going to select the folder that you want to save the activation request file to, and then click save. Okay, so now Cakewalk saves an activation request CRQ file. Now this file is encrypted and machine specific and can only be used to activate Cakewalk on the machine that was originally used to create the activation request file. So from here, all you need to do is simply copy the activation request or the CRQ file to a removable media, such as a USB flash drive and then you can transfer it to another computer that is connected to the internet. All right, so now using an online computer, open the BandLab Assistant and sign in with your BandLab ID and password. Simply click the Apps tab up here at the top right, and then underneath the Cakewalk by BandLab tab, use this drop-down box to process offline activation request. If the activation is granted, BandLab Assistant generates an activation response DAT file. From here, you're simply going to copy the activation response.dat file to removable media that you can then transfer back to your offline Cakewalk computer. Now moving back to the computer that's not hooked to the internet, you can simply go to help, offline activation, and import activation response. From here, you simply select the activation response data file and click open. If the response file is valid, Cakewalk is now activated. Yet another cool feature that's rolling out in the new update is early access toast notifications. Now, in case you're unaware, a toast notification is the small box that appears in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen whenever you first start Cakewalk. Early access availability is checked whenever normal updates are checked and a toast notification appears if an early access build is available. 
The Early Access Program provides pre-release versions of Cakewalk, much like what we're seeing here today, to the public for general testing and for issue reporting. Now, this actually helps Cakewalk to get better real-world test coverage from users like me and you, which is useful to improve the reliability and the quality of their releases. Now, participation is 100% voluntary, but it's definitely fun to be involved with. Now, let's talk about some of the enhancements and the bug fixes that are going to be rolling out with this new version as well. One of the first things is the mono plugin support changes that have been implemented. This release greatly improves the effects rack handling with respect to mixing and matching mono or stereo plugins. These improvements are across the board and work in the track, bus, and clip FX racks, FX chains, and even in the pro channel. So now, bypassing or removing plugins in an FX rack or a rack bypass or global effects bypass operations will now revert any mono or stereo interleave changes caused by the plugin and recalculate delay compensation properly. Also, changing the mono stereo interleave from the track strip button now updates the FX rack routing correctly. Now, this is dependent on whether the Pro Channel bin is pre-FX rack and if it contains mono plugins. Previously, pitch shifted audio and distortion were symptoms of issues that are fixed in this release. This could occur under multiple scenarios such as moving plugins, bypassing, deleting, or undoing. Another improvement is the mouse wheel handling. Console view vertical scrolling via mouse wheel is less prone to inadvertently adjusting perimeter values if there is a brief pause during the scroll gesture. For example, while vertically scrolling the mouse wheel, suddenly it starts scrolling the volume slider instead. The internal timer that waits for inactivity before treating the next mouse wheel movement as a new operation has been increased from 500 milliseconds to 1000 milliseconds. This ensures that the current scroll operation doesn't change mid-gesture. Also, in the console view, tooltips dynamically show values now when changing perimeters via the mouse wheel. And lastly, FX racks for tracks, buses, and clips can be scrolled via the mouse wheel. With the new update, we also have an increased contrast of ghosted envelopes. The color contrast of ghosted automation envelopes has been increased, making them easier to see against the dark clips pane background. Now, clicking on the bus pane will automatically set the bus focus strip. This facilitates copying and pasting bus envelopes by clicking and pasting. Another cool aesthetic feature is the scrollable clip effects rack in the inspector view. Now the clip effects racks in inspector view now display up to 10 plugins and are scrollable using both the mouse wheel and the scroll bar. Another handy feature is the improved support for recording automation via the numeric input. When recording automation, envelope nodes can now be recorded by typing a value in the pop-up edit controls in the inspector, console view, track view, pro channel EQ, and EQ flyout module. The numeric input will be recorded as a jump during the automation recording. To show the numeric input pop-up, give focus to a control or its value display, and then press F2 or double-click the value display. Likewise, there's been an improved recording automation of synth parameters. Now, multiple synth parameters can be recorded in a single record pass, and all envelopes are now retained. While loop recording, in order to avoid clutter, the automation preview only shows the last loop record pass and all recording envelopes will be displayed when you stop the playback. To coincide with this, there is improved support for copying and pasting automation envelopes. Automation envelopes can now be easily copied and pasted from tracks to buses and vice versa. To copy track automation to a bus, first select and copy the envelope from the track, then click on the target bus or lane and paste. You can also copy and paste bus automation to the tracks the same way. Moving or copying arrangement sections now properly manages copying and pasting the associated bus and synth automation envelopes. Lastly, they've added bus delete stability improvements. So bus deletion can now be performed while the transport is rolling without stopping the audio engine, and an intermittent crash and app shutdown on undoing bus deletion was solved. So these are just some of the key features that we'll be rolling out within the next few days. If you'd like to see a comprehensive list of all of the optimizations and the bug fixes that are involved with this, you can head to the link that's in the description of this video to check it out for yourself. If this video was helpful, give me a thumbs up, and if you have any questions whatsoever, leave me a comment in the comment section below. I answer every one of my comments. Also, you're more than welcome to hop on the live stream every Saturday for Sound Advice Saturday, where I take questions and I answer anything audio-related or Cakewalk by BandLab-related live. Until next time, guys, you all have a blessed day.